Hey guys, Dividing by Zero here, and that was a game that we had yesterday. And of course, by that game, if you couldn't tell by what we have up here right now, it is the Atlanta Rain versus the San Francisco Shock. I watched basically the whole thing. It was back and forth. Everyone popped off at times. It was a really, really fun game to watch. And of course, if you were watching at the end, you saw the incredible ending to this Rialto map that ended in was a San Francisco Shock C9 to lose the entire thing. And it was just that entire sequence of events in that final fight on Rialto was so insane and just so all over the place and all at once that I really wanted to take a look at this final fight and really try and break it down the best I can and tell you exactly what happened during this final fight. And before you guys get uh, get smart in the comments, yes, what happened was the Shock C9. But I wanted to try and figure out how they C9, the events that led up to the C9, everything that happened uh, going into the fight as the fight proceeded, the ultimates that were used and what happened to that. I think I noticed a couple of pretty interesting things in hindsight, and I hope that uh, you all think it's interesting as well. This is going to be a shorter video, uh, less edited, but only partially scripted. I just really wanted to try and take you through the events of this final fight on Rialto and try and decipher uh, how exactly we ended up doing what we were doing. So I think the fair thing to do is to take you through this fight at full speed and just in case some of you haven't seen it or it's maybe a little while after the game and I just need to jog your memory to show you the entire fight at full speed uh, just to set the stage for this fight for you. This is game seven in the winner's quarterfinals of the Overwatch League season two playoffs. So far in this game, the team that has picked the map has won it um, and the rain did pick this map. Um, the rain... To put some more setting on the stage, the rain, when they crossed into point C, they had almost five minutes on the clock. They had been destroying Shock up to that point, but the Shock had finally found some footing on point C, and they were just repelling them and repelling them and repelling them. And finally, we see that they are down to just 35 seconds, which is just an insane hold by the Shock on any map. A four plus minute hold is insane. And so that means with 35 seconds left on the clock, it all comes down to this fight. There is so much pressure on everyone, I have to imagine. Because this is the entire game. These teams have been fighting back and forth for two to three hours at this point. And it all comes down to this fight. So uh, before I say anything about the fight itself, let's just uh, let's go back just a teeny bit. Let's go back just a teeny bit and uh, take a look at the fight at full speed. The shock. The, the, the only thing that could get their shock in trouble here is Poco gets the supercharger. You may have to use the sound barrier, and then you don't have it for the gravitic flux. And that's how seconds. Atlanta wants the combo. Gravitic flux, Gator had to be a sound barrier. Smurf able to stay alive, but for how long? The flux also coming out from the shock. Smurf is down. Massa is removed into one for one, but Poco supercharging. No! Oh, so. That was a pretty incredible series of events, and there is a lot of things happening at once. So, now, we try our best to figure out exactly what happened and exactly how the San Francisco Shock got to the point where they did. So, first let's go back to the beginning of the fight and see what, uh, where the teams are at coming into this. So first of all, what we should notice is that teams are running mirror comps. We have the the Doomfist Reaper DPS combo, we have the Orisa Sigma tanks, and the Moira Lucio for the supports, which tends to be what it seems to have turned into GOATS 2, basically, when you really just want a lot of point presence and you want a lot of close range, especially in this shield meta. That's when, uh, that's when these comps come out. Um, and I think, really, a lot of the keys to winning in this in this meta is just it really does come down to kill them and don't let them kill you <laughs> you don't let the doomfist get past your shields and punch you in the face and get a one-hit ko on anyone that pretty much anyone that isn't uh that isn't a tank you don't want to let reaper teleport into your back line and get behind you and get some kills 
Um, you also, uh, you want to break shield. It's a, it's a meme at this point. Breaking shield, breaking shield, breaking shield, breaking shield. But it really is important to win that shield war, especially in when we're in what is a shield meta. It's also worth mentioning that support ult usage is very important. Beat is extremely important, as it always is. It's a very good support ultimate, especially when you have ultimates like Gravitic Flux, uh, Meteor Strike, uh, Death Blossom to try and be defending against. And of course, Coalescence is very good in this meta because it goes through shields. And like I said, this is shield meta. It's very important. And if you have an ult that completely negates shields, well, that makes it very valuable. So I think something that we have to take a look at is what team's ults are looking like coming into this fight. Uh, the last fight, the, you can tell the Rain actually used a lot of ultimates. They used both of their support ultimates. They used both of their DPS ultimates. Uh, Urster has actually done a very good job of building up another Meteor Strike quite quickly. He could get it back. But for the Rain, you're pretty much just looking at Gravitic Flux and Supercharger. And that is... That's a little tough, especially when you look on the other side and you see that Moth has his sound barrier nearly online. You usually, you'd probably want to save the sound barrier for when the Gravitic Flux comes out just to make sure that no one dies to that. Um, but the Supercharger is a huge threat as well. And I think a key thing in this fight will be seeing how Moth uses, coming into it at least, seeing how Moth uses his, uh, his sound barrier in order to conflict these two. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that Choi Hyobin is about to have his own Gravitic Flux on the other side of the shock. Uh, Smurf, uh, I don't remember exactly what happened, but Smurf died earlier in the last fight. He swapped over to Ball in order to get back to the point faster, and now he has no ultimate charge there. Uh, no one else really seems to be significantly close to their ultimate, so that is what we're lurking, working with. Rain uh, with their Supercharger and the Gravitic Flux. Shock with their... Uh, sound barrier and their own gravitic flux so uh yeah so let's let's quickly uh we're on 0.25 speed now uh we're going to go ahead actually we'll go ahead and keep this going so let's quickly take a look at how the shock are playing here as the camera will uh pan up uh, and we'll get a better look on how the shock are positioned so you'll see that the Shock are playing overall fairly defensive. You have Smurf up here contesting the point with his Arisa shield, and everyone else, you Choi Hyobin, Sinatra, Violet, Moth up here, uh, Striker is, I think, just a little bit behind this wall right here. Everyone's playing quite defensive. They're on a, they're on a very backwards hold, uh, basically just putting a lot on Smurf to contest the cart right now. And this is totally fine as long as you can keep Smurf up. Because you you really are playing the come and get us game when it comes to that. And I think that's fine. I have no issues with that as long as you can keep Smurf alive. Because he's your main point contestant. Uh, he's your main, he's the main thing that's keeping the point from moving. Um, obviously. And with him gone, if he ends up going down, which spoiler alert, he will, the shock may have some trouble getting people the juggle on the point and keep contesting it. So you gotta keep Smurf alive. Meanwhile, of course, with that, uh, Smurf is the most accessible person for the shock to, uh, try and, try and take down. For the, sorry, for the rain to try and take down. Uh, so let's take a look at how this fight starts up. So as the, uh, as we start up, the, uh, Atlanta Rain has hit up their double shield. Of course, I told you how the Arisa shield came out, uh, from Smurf already. Weirdly, I haven't really seen the shield from Choi Hyobin. Um, I didn't, I haven't seen the Sigma shield. Maybe I'm just missing it because there's so much stuff going on the screen at once. But it does seem like we have two shields versus one, which is interesting. Um, coming in, you see the halt right there from Pokpo. He is doing, he's gonna try and do a halt, and you'll see, you see Ursa right there charging up his punch. Uh, he's gonna come in for the punch. Uh, also the rock comes in on the halt to try and, try and stun some people out. Uh, unfortunately, I think the rock does get broken by Smurf's Arisa shield, but Urster does get in, and he takes out, he gets a punch off on the Smurf, taking him down to about half health. So, already, uh, the main tank of the shock has taken a significant amount of damage. Uh, you'll see right here, Sinatra comes in, tries to get the counter punch in there on Anyone who's really in there, Erster's right there, Pockpo's in there, Baby Bay's in there. This that was really their uh, their motion to engage, especially now that Smurf is taking more and more damage. Uh, but you can see here, 
You think I think Sinatra just let go of the right click button on it just a little too much. Oh wait, actually. Okay, so maybe I'm wrong here because Urster did get uh Urster did get hit there. So he got hit by something. He either got hit by the rock from Choi Hyobin or he got hit by the punch from Sinatra. So Urster comes in. Yeah, no, you could see. Let's see if I can go back just a teeny bit, just like a frame or two. Uh, a little bit too far. Yeah, just a teeny bit. And here comes Urster. And there's the rock right there. You see the rock right there. So Urster gets hit by the rock. Yeah, see, now he's stunned. It's the, it's the rock, not the, uh, not the punch from Sinatra, where you can see he really just kind of comes in and stops right there. Maybe he gets, uh, fortified by Pokpo, possibly. Um, it's either that, or he just, uh, ends up coming up short because he let go of the right click just a little too fast. So, uh, now, with that out of mind, Gator now activates his Gravitic Flux, possibly to try and finish off Smurf, but he has his Fortify. He's going to get out. Uh, so will Striker get out with his uh, Wraith ability. So the Gravitic Flux comes out, and he brings up Choi Hyobin. He brings up Violet over there. Uh, and then, of course, you see Moth up there, who also got pulled up. Smurf has just a sliver of health left, so the beat uh, was actually just about as perfect as it possibly could be to try and keep him alive. Um, so pretty much a great, uh, usage of the sound barrier from Moth. There really is, wasn't m much better way he could do that because Smurf was totally dead otherwise. So it has to come out at that point. Um, so the Gravitic Flux comes out. The sound barrier comes out to keep everyone alive. It's also worth mentioning that Pogpo, yeah, so Pogpo during that engagement has gotten his supercharger and he used it immediately, which is an okay way to use it. I might have wanted him to save it until, uh... The sound barrier had gone away, and then you could keep that momentum and that uh, damage boost and uh, damage resistance up and not have to worry about the uh, sound barrier, but uh, just putting it down as soon as you get it, I, can't, I can understand that. It's a really stressful situation. You see the ult, it's glowing, you're like, yes, this gives my team a better chance to win. Q. So, you know, I can I can understand that from Pogpo. I think looking back on it, maybe I would have saved, I would have wanted him to save it until the sound barrier was gone, but it is what it is. So now the gravity flux comes down, the slam comes down. Uh, everyone has now gotten hit from the shock with the sound barrier, so that was pretty much perfect from him. So it's also worth mentioning that uh, it's possible that Pogpo knows that Choi Hyobin has now achieved his own gravity flux and was going to use it, which might be why the supercharger comes down to try and lessen the blow of that ultimate. So now Smurf is getting, there's a very, I have to give it to the rain, very good focus fire from them. Very good focus fire from them. Smurf is eventually going to go down due to Baby Bay right here and a bunch of others. You'll see the, uh, you'll see the <laughs> teamwork there from Smurf. Gravitic Flux starts to come out. Um, let's go back just a little bit because you see Masa also goes down. Uh. So where is he? There's Masa right there. He's he's going in. He's Reddit Lucioing it. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what Masa's goal here was. Probably to get some kind of displacement. Maybe knock them off the card a little bit. But he goes straight in here. Uh, goes in. Yeah, you see him go for the uh, you see him go for the displacement there with for the boop. Um, doesn't end up accomplishing much. And on the way out, he does get caught by Sinatra and will be taken down. So now it's a 5v5, Smurf down from the shock and Masa down from the rain. And the question is, who won that engagement? And uh, who is hurting more after their losses? And I think the question is, what do these characters bring to their team? So Masa provides a good amount of healing as Lucio, but Dogman is doing most of it as Moira. That is his job. Uh, he's providing some engagement maybe with his speed, but speed has kind of been nerfed a little bit. It's not quite as good. And also everyone's just kind of hanging around in the choke anyways. I'm not 100% sure how much good engagement would be for this. He's also providing, I guess, a little bit of displacement. But almost every hero in this meta, in this roster, has some kind of ability to, to get rid of displacement. Not to get rid of displacement, but the co counter displacement. Like the Wraith form for Reaper, just kind of punching out of it from Sinatra. <laughs> uh, fade fade from violet moth just skating away so 
not that much. Meanwhile, Smurf on the other side, he is a huge damage sponge. I know it mentioned before how he's the main person contesting the cart. He's also doing a lot of shielding with his Arisa shields, which is super important because we are calling this a shield meta after all. And even though Smurf has the uh, has the advantage with his uh, with his respawn time and with his respawn distance, Mazda is on Lucio, which means he is going to get back pretty quick anyways. Even though Smurf is probably going to end up going ball here, probably would have ended up going ball and get back to the point as soon as possible, um, Mazda would also get back pretty quick. So I think... In this time when we're when we're fighting a five v five, I honestly give the uh, give the give the advantage to the rain. As long as Dogman can keep up the healing, I think that uh, they're gonna miss Smurf's uh, damage damage absorption and his shielding more than the rain are gonna miss Masa's uh, healing and also his she and also his uh, engagement abilities. So now we'll see. We see at this point. Uh, Choyobin has used his own Gravitic Flux. Uh, he's pulled up, uh, Gator, you see Pogpo right there, and Baby Bay right here. If we go just a little bit further, you will see Baby Bay's health is just, just a little bit, little teeny is bit above half. And as you, uh, probably know Gravitic Flux, the slam part of the Gravitic Flux is 50%. Of a, of a player's total health. So Baby Bay is going to survive this with just a sliver of health. Pockpo can't really do anything. Uh, yeah, that really isn't going to do too, too much. Uh, but, uh, well, of course, everyone's going to be low. I mean, everyone's going to do a lot of damage, but no one is going to die from it is the important part. But looking as they are coming down and Gator is up in the air, he has a rock up here. And so keep an eye on that rock as it, as it travels past in this next engagement. Also, you see Erster in the back line right here. He's charging up a punch, obviously aiming for Violet. So we're going to go through and watch this come through. Crazy, right? So Gator, from all the way up here, manages to land a rock onto Moth, who is just completely off the screen at this point. And at the same time, Erster lands a punch onto Violet. Now both of them are quite low. Both of the healers on the shock are quite, quite low. And Violet uses his fade to get out of there. Moth is still, still, uh, still stunned, but I'm not really even on the screen anymore. So now we're looking at, um... A situation where the shock have very low healers. Uh, Moth did, was able to pick off the supercharger before they uh, fell, though. So that means the slam is going to be doing its full damage. Uh, and as you see, as they land, as they land, you can see the second they land, that's when the payload starts to move again. There's no one currently on the payload for the shock. Baby Bay has a sliver of health. Pockpo is very low. Gator is getting focused down by Choi Hoban from up above. Um, but the key thing here is obviously who's on the point. So let's take this line by let's take this line by line. So um, Choi Hyobin is way up here. He's falling down from Gravitic Flux. He's going to use his rock to hit uh, probably Gator over there. Yeah, Gator gets stunned in a second, as you'll see. Um, but Choi Hyobin's going to use his rock to hit to hit Gator. But he's going to land behind the point to the point where he can't actually contest. Um, Smurf is dead. He can't contest, obviously. Uh, Violet used, Violet is low and used his fade to get out. Uh, Moth is still stunned from the rock, so he can't, he can't get out. And then it comes down to Stryker and Sinatra, who, as you'll see, Stryker has turned to try and deal with Erster in the back line. And so has Sinatra, as you'll see. Uh, you should see, yeah, you see, you see an orange little knuckle, knuckle, uh, gun right there from Sinatra. So that's a Sinatra is also in the back line dealing with Erster. And that's, that's everyone. There's no one on the point. So as a recap, Choi Hyobin in the back can't contest. Uh, Smurf dead can't contest. Violet and Moth very low and use their escape abilities. They can't contest. Stryker and Sinatra focus on Erster in the back line. They can't contest. C9. I just like listening to Uber and Mr. X scream in slow motion. <laughs> uh, and also something that should be uh, brought up is in the very, very last moment before the, sh before the, uh, I have to like get the, I have to get the pause like perfect. But in the very, very last moment before the payload crosses the end, uh, to their credit, 
uh, Striker and Sinatra do it. See, there it is. There's a kill feed starting to come up. Erster is down. So Sinatra and Striker are able to take down Erster and possibly Violet and Moth too. But no one's on the point. And the Shock lose it, which is just crazy. So the question coming into this is, so let's take this back to right before the C9 happens. Okay, there we go. So we're right back to right as the payload is about to do it. It's at 0 .00 meters. Urser has just died. Um, so the question is, would the Shock have won this fight if they didn't C9? And the answer is, as it stands right now, yeah, probably. At the moment, when the C9 has happened, like I said, Urser has just died. So now the Shock are in a 5v4 situation. Uh, and when you look at the health bars of the entire team, Baby Bay has just a sliver of health. Pockpo has about a quarter health. Gator has about a quarter health. And he's stunned, probably about to die. Troy Yobin's actually in pretty good position to get like a triple kill right here. Uh, unfortunately, he's not on the cart. They would have needed either him or maybe Striker to contest the cart here. Um, but obviously... That didn't end up happening. To make matters worse for the Shock, you look at Violet right here, who is 95% of the way to his Coalescence, which means he's going to be getting it any second now. Uh, and of course, Coalescence is so good in this just because it goes straight through shields. So, you know, not many people can get at Baby Bay and Pockpo and Gator except for Choi Hyobin uh, because they're double shielded up. But uh, Violet has his Coalescence, which just completely ignores that. And with the combination of that and Choi Hyobin doing a bunch of doing a bunch of damage in the back that is probably all three of them dead assuming that Violet uses his coalescence as soon as he gets it which he probably should um yeah no matter how you slice it unless Dogman did some sort of heroic thing and got the last 20% to his coalescence instantly uh and honestly looking at where he's positioned in regards to the rest of his team I don't think that's happening. I think he's actually going after Striker a little bit, and the rest of his team is about to die. Uh, so, you know, you can call that DPS Moira, whatever you want. But uh, the way, no matter how you slice it, the Shock are winning this. The Shock were honestly just about to take down Baby Bay, Pockpo, and Gator, and Dogman would have been soon to follow. Uh, the Shock were about to win this fight. I really wanted to go into this and be like, well, it really sucks that the Shock C9, but they would have lost it anyways because of this or that or this. But I just can't see it. I think that if the Shock had contested the point for maybe like three more seconds, they would have won this. And we could have been talking about what was one of the most impressive holds that we have seen in the history of Overwatch League. What a shame, honestly.